Hello everyone, this is Tim Donahue from DuraSpace and I'm, this is the first of many video updates from the DSpace New UI initiative. Uh, the goal of this initiative is really to build a new user interface for DSpace to replace the aging XML UI and JSP UI. And it's the top priority in our roadmap as was presented at the Open Repositories Conference in 2015 last year. And this first video, I really just want to update people on where we've come from and where the background is and where we're sort of going towards in this initiative. Uh, just in case you haven't had a chance to keep up on the wiki and other places that word has kind of bubbled out little by little. But in any case, back in late 2015, we had a DSpace UI working group that uh, ran a UI prototype challenge. And I'm showing you the wiki page right here where you can go for a lot more information about that UI prototype challenge. You can see what the guidelines were, timelines, and the nine prototypes that came out of that. So at the end of December, we had nine prototypes, that, as I had just mentioned, that were submitted into this prototype challenge. And the UI working group began to review these with a group of, um, of committers and other people who joined in on some of those calls. So we started in January and February and had live demos and discussions that were recorded. And they're, they're linked down at the bottom of this particular wiki page. We've got a link right here into the, under the January, February time frame. But if you scroll all the way down, you can watch those videos for any of those initial nine prototypes. But from there, in February, we started to gather feedback from the community. So we had a public feedback form. We advertised on the lists. We encouraged people to go and watch those videos and give us your feedback on which ones looked interesting. And the initial feedback we got, uh, things started to, started to kind of get, gather around two main platforms. It wasn't necessarily two prototypes, but it was platforms, common platforms that were actually shared across multiple prototypes. The first of those platforms was to build a, a Java-based user interface, so similar to what DSpace currently has. Currently, we have two of them. We've got the JSP UI and the XML UI, and they're both based on Java underneath, uh, with slight differences, obviously, in the display layer. But that was one platform, was to modernize at a Java user interface level. There were much more modern platforms we could use, things like Spring Boot, that could really bring our user interface forward and make a large leap, um, even at the Java level. But the second uh, platform or framework that we started to standardize around and talk around was actually thinking about moving beyond Java, in particular to a JavaScript user interface, one that is a little bit more of a modern framework, a little bit easier to learn and pick up. There's more JavaScript developers out there. Uh, we saw advantages to actually making a much more uh, usable, user-friendly interface, a user experience that was much enhanced because we'd have that JavaScript capability built in. So that was the other thing that was quite exciting um, that came out of those prototypes. So we standard, we had these two platforms that we actually brought in March to the uh, DuraSpace Summit. And they were presented by the working group, um, myself and uh, Jonathan Markow um, and others uh, from the working group were in attendance at that summit. And we talked with the leadership group and the steering group members who were uh, able to attend the summit and presented these two options and laid them out in terms of the pros and the cons of each particular platform and um, started to get feedback directly from them. Uh, the main thing that came out of those summit discussions was really that there was, there, was amount of, there was a good amount of excitement around investigating the JavaScript UI platform in much more detail to run an extended prototype. The main pros we saw there, the main advantages, uh, were, as I kind of mentioned and alluded to, uh, maybe we could attract some new developers. We could build a much more um, modern user experience, allow much more dynamic uh, interaction with the user interface. The interface could be the interface could actually be a lot more quicker because it's all JavaScript run in your browser and maybe much snappier than than a server side sort of platform. And we had talked more and more about how this could give us a nice competitive advantage and really kind of give DSpace a nice leap forward in terms of repository platforms and bring us to a new level and also allow institutions to more easily customize the interface without having to touch Java code at all. They could just dig into the, the JavaScript layer and, and tweak it or tweak the templates at that layer. 
So there were a lot of big pros that the steering and the leadership group came out of that. But the main con, the main thing that was against it, was that a lot of these JavaScript frameworks, especially those that were featured in the initial nine prototypes, uh, had some disadvantages in terms of actually being indexed by search engines. So it was very difficult for Google Scholar, Google, uh, Bing, Yahoo, whatever search engine you want to you want to list out there to actually index uh, dynamic JavaScript built applications. And some some search engines can do that nowadays, and others still have have issues here and there. But we wanted to investigate more and more during those discussions. We started to realize that while that is a, a disadvantage to the existing JavaScript frameworks, there were new JavaScript frameworks just on the horizon that whose goal were to actually improve that capability to allow server-side rendering or server-side building of the user interface, a JavaScript interface. And what that basically means is that Google Scholar could index it, Google could index it, Yahoo could index it, just like any any other website. Um, so as we saw this coming on the horizon, the steering group and the leadership group at the summit and those others in attendance uh, started to realize that it might be worth going into a, a secondary prototype, an extended prototype, looking specifically at one of these brand new platforms um, that was in beta at the time. It's the Angular 2 platform. If you're not familiar with Angular, uh, Angular 1 is actually the most popular of the JavaScript frameworks out there. And Angular 2 is the, the new version of that. And its, its goal is to build upon that base framework and bring it up to the next level to allow it to have these sort of SEO capabilities, to, to take away a lot of the, the long-term disadvantages that people have been saying around JavaScript, to be able to make it easier to index, to make it easier to work with, um, and, uh, and make pages load quicker from the get-go. So there's some, some things that were already coming out in Angular 2. It was in beta at the time. And so at the summit, it was decided that, that a group of four institutions would take, um, take some time, look into prototyping an Angular 2 user interface, and see what we could figure out. Could we build a, a basic DSpace user interface? And could we then hand it over to someone like Google Scholar and have it indexed um, and see, if, see how that would work out and see what our experience was with that? So four institutions signed up immediately that day. We had Texas A&M, Atmire, Chineka, and DuraSpace. And so we all have been meeting since then, starting to build out this user interface prototype on the Angular 2 platform. And that's what I'm going to go into today in this particular um, small video update. Uh, but I hope you continue to watch these. The next one, I'll talk a little bit more about that prototyping process especially phase one of that prototype where we tried to build something that Google Scholar could give us some immediate feedback on in terms of their ability to index it. So we'll get into that more in the next one and I hope you continue to follow along with this and hope to see, see even more of this later. Please be willing to give us feedback as well as we're going through this. You're more than welcome to send feedback across the lists on the threads that we're going to be sending these video updates on. So thanks a lot for watching. Bye.